and welcome back to the crochet crowd and on behalf of my friends at lily sugar and cream we are presenting you this beautiful little spring wreath and it has actually four different patterns that go around this wreath and again the ideas that you're seeing here can actually go further into other things uh, that you want to decorate as well so let's uh, just examine what we have and so we have a butterfly Okay, and I've actually done my butterfly a little differently than what they've suggested. Um, they've suggested using glue to do the centerpiece on the back end. And then I've actually added a little bit of uh, antenna to it as well. So you have the butterfly. You have a, just a simple leaf. Okay, and the pattern gives you how many leaves and, and butterflies and all that stuff you're going to need. So a leaf. The daffodil. Not a very hard pattern to do, it's just a little bit, um, just to get started was a kind of like, to understand the pattern was a little bit difficult. And of course then we have the bell flower with the pistol that's coming out of the bottom. I found this one was kind of the pain of the, all the four of them. So uh, let's get started. And So we're going to work on this bell flower next and I find this one to be the most pain of the, of the collection. And you know, it's, it's so small it shouldn't be, but it's just because it is small that it drives me crazy. So let's uh, begin to do that and using your material, just using whatever colors that you feel appropriate. And of course this is the sugar and cream line. And what I want to do now is that I want to um, use the size G hook, which I am using, and it says to chain two. So this does not count as one. So one and two, okay, just like so. And now it says six single crochets in the second from the hook. So obviously that's the second. So let's do six. We're going to have to put it into there, and we just want a six single crochets. So I'm kind of using my finger, my thumb, and my nasty finger to show me where that loop is. So that was one. Okay. This is two. The straggler is getting on my nerves. So that was two. This will be three. Three. Four. Five. And I'm going to let that straggler fall out now. Five, and this will be number six. And I guess why it's a pain is that it's hard to tell. So what I'm going to use, use is one of my stitch markers, and this is provided by Exquisite Concepts. My friend Lori makes these fabulous polymer um, ideas. And so I'm just going to put it in the sixth one on the top, and I'm just going to slip it now. So slip stitch it with the first one in order to make it solid round. Just coming in and through, just like so. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to move on to my next round. Well, this is a very easy round that we got coming up, and so we're just going to chain one. Okay, and we're immediately going to go into the very next. So we want we only have six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and actually six. I'm just going to move this one more over, so that I just want to kind of count ahead of time on where I'm going. So. We're just going to single crochet ourselves all the way around into each one of the six that you see. The counting of this uh, particular bell is actually important. That's probably why it drives me crazy because if you lose count, it does make it go weird in shape. Okay, and so then where the stitch marker is in, okay, just like so, that is my sixth one. So I'm just going to pull it, put it through there. So I'm just going to take that stitch marker out be easier than me trying to negotiate it in. So out. So this is the sixth one. And now I want to put my stitch marker back in so I don't lose my spot. I'm just going to put it back in. And then slip, slip it with the next one that's available. Okay, so that was round number two. Okay. So it doesn't look like you did much, but you're actually starting to create the bell shape that's going on. Okay, in round number three, what we're going to do now is just chain up one. Okay, and now each of the next two are going to get a single crochet. So let's go in. So one, and the next one is going to get a single. And so then, then it's asking for the next one now, the third one in a row, to get two single crochets in a row. So one and two into the very same hole or stitch and now it's asking you to go all the way so one and two and so the very last one that where my stitch marker is I'm just going to pull that out I'm pull 
that I is going to get two. Okay, and what I want to do is slip in my slitch marker again, right in the top section, and then do my slip stitch with the very first one again. Okay, so basically what you've done now is that you've started now to make it start to fan out, just like that. Let's move along to your next round. Okay, now it's saying to chain up one. Okay, and, we're, and the next one that we're going to do is going to get one single crochet, and then the very next one is going to get two. So the next stitch will get two single crochets right in a row there. And now the next one is going to get one. The next one is going to get two. One and two. Okay, and now the next one is going to get one. Okay, and the next one is going to get two. One and two. Okay, and so you're back, back on to where you've started. So you're just going to single crochet your final one. And you know, you might actually have a different complete size as, as well, so you might actually have an extra spot. On the bell flowers, it doesn't matter too much, I don't think, on the, exactly where you're finishing off. But uh, there you go. Okay, so it's like a little hat for your thumb at this point. And uh, let's move along to your next rotation. Okay, so right where that hook is, I'm going to put my slip uh, stitch back in. I'm sorry, my stitch marker back in to the one right before it. So let me just put that in. Okay, and so it says to chain one. I'm going to do that, and now it says to put one single crochet all the way around. Okay, and we want to do this for rows number five and six. So I want to put my stitch marker in there so I know exactly where I've gone all the way around. I did the first one without doing a stitch marker, and it, it's kind of difficult to tell with the same color um, where the first and the last stitches are supposed to be on a particular rotation, and sometimes you under guess. So I'm not even sure that the, the one that you see in the background is actually done right. And I probably shouldn't be admitting that on camera, but hey, it looks fine. So Okay, so that was one rotation. So let's slip stitch it. I'm not going to move my marker up. I'm just going to leave it because it's just going to show it there anyway. So let's chain up one. And again, going all the way around, this is for row number six. Uh, also, what you're looking at too is that when I did this, um, the, what you're seeing on the actual background one is actually it turned inside out. So, in actual fact, you're looking at the inside of this bell at this point because at the end I turned it inside out. Now, it's stereo supposed to it doesn't say to do that, but um, I did it because that's what I did. Okay, so we want to slip it. Okay, so number five and six are done, and so now we're just going to now work on your next part of this project. Okay, so the next part I'm going to have you cheat. So let's chain up one, and so then we know where exactly where we're starting. And I want you to count the stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is right. And so now what we need to do is it does a bell shape at the bottom, and it's kind of like a, a half shell, just like so, and it says to do it three times. So what I want you to do is that I want you to just eye it out and put a stitch marker in. So just skip the first one, go into the second there, okay, and then just second, and then I would go in probably the third one there, and then probably just over here. This is so cheating, by the way, just what I'm showing you. So if you're gonna take me to cheating school, then <laughs> you may uh, consider that. So. Um, I just want to make sure that my bells are actually at the, the bell shape uh, shells are at the same point. So now what I want to do is just reach over to the very first one. Okay, so now you can take that out because you just nailed it. Okay, out. And now I want to put five uh, double crochets in a row right into the same stitch. And that causes it to do a bell shape. So 
so you can follow the pattern more literally you know sometimes the pattern is more of a guideline you know you can you know mix and match and do whatever you want to a pattern in order to make it work for you so now what you want to do is now jump to the next one so just slip your hook in okay you can slip that one out and now you want to do whoops want to do five half or double crochets right in a row again so one and what I mean by row is like it's in the same hole in order to cause the bell shape to happen so it's four so this is five okay so now this is the final one here and again just slip in your hook so you're gonna slip that out and now let's do five oops I did exactly what I did before it's a double crochet so in the one in the background I kind of got it strategically positioned because you can honestly tell on the one in the background that the bell shape that I'm just doing right now the the five they were not equally spaced in advance and so basically when I followed it along if I missed a stitch along the way or I added by accident then um, it was very easy to tell on that one so I was kind of disappointed with that one in the end to be quite honest with you so that's five there and so now what we want to just do is slip stitch it to the very first shell shape there okay. so let's fasten off so with my Westcott scissors just passing off those are sharp scissors by the way holy cow but they're perfect for the yarn because they just cut it my other scissors from the dollar store they kind of I hack the yarn to bits and make the ends tear away so okay so this is the you're looking at the inside of the bell it's inside out at this moment but I want to leave it inside out for the next step to create the pistol that is on the interior of this particular bell flower so let's uh, begin to do the pistol next to do the pistol we're actually going to work on the very bottom of it and work our way to the top okay so it's chain two so let's start off and use a complementary color that works for you. So let's chain two. So this does not count as one. So let's one and two. And it says to do six single crochets a second from the hook. So it's obviously the very first stitch. So we want to do six. So one, two, three. You got four, five, and six. And it says to slip stitch it from the first into the first one. So we just want to slip it in and through and through. Okay. And now what it's asking you to do is to chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine and ten and now it says to fasten off so just using your fancy dancy scissors pulling it through so just using that loose end there so we might as well trim the bottom edge while we're here so we're just going to trim and now we're going to use this straggler piece now to fasten it to the top so what i want to not do is that i don't want to fasten it so you don't see the yellow on the top there and the reason for it is that I've just slipped it underneath the string that appears on this side only. So just pick a string that you can see near the top. And because it's a bellflower, you really can't tell if it's off center. Anyway, so, okay, so just slip it in the top, grabbing the material, pulling it through, like so. And now we just want to tie it into position. And so now let's just trim that blue. You will never see it anyway, but I'm just going to do it just for the sake of kind of, uh, keeping it tidy. So now what you want to do is turn the flower inside out. So now the pistol is attached to the center. 
just like so. So the chaining of 10, um, you can make it a chaining of 6. You can go even smaller if you feel that's a little bit too much. But uh, again, you can see the nice flowering effect in its equal amounts on all sides. So that's how you do the flower with the pistol. And this is the bellflower.